Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ, episode 165 of the series where I answer all your questions, sharp or dull. This week, amongst the topics we're looking at, we're going to be thinking about when it's appropriate to have a pocket knife, and when it's appropriate to have a fixed blade instead. Let's get into it. All right, if you're new to this series, welcome. And the questions that we answer each and every week, we pull from our comments section below these videos. So if you're watching this and you think, hey, I've got a question, I want to have it uh, potentially featured on a future episode myself. Well, drop your question in the comments and perhaps we will uh, pull it out for a future episode. Uh, this week, we get our first question from Shelp. As an archeologist, I'm looking for a folding knife that's robust enough to be in the dust and dirt and then be thrown in a bag or pocket without cleaning and it's still ready to go the next day, preferably under a hundred dollars. Sure. Um, so when thinking about this as a, uh, you know, a folding knife uh, first, cause that's the, uh, the question you asked, um, the, my mind goes to something with uh, washers in the pivot, not ball bearings, uh, and something with a more like traditional lock back or frame lock uh, is also a good option. Uh, but the thing uh, that I'm thinking about today is the Cold Steel Large Voyager. Uh, I've shown some other things that kind of meet uh, my criteria here as well, like construction folks have asked me this question. There are some good frame locking options. Um, but the reason I like the triad lock in this cold steel, which looks a lot like a lock pack, but performs just a tiny bit differently under the hood, is the digging aspect uh, that you're, uh, you're bringing to the table here, which I'll get to in a second. But anyway, we've got a four inch blade, uh, Aus 10 stainless steel, not too much worry about maintenance there uh, in terms of keeping it uh, rust free, that is. And the Tonto profile, I think, think would have some good uh, diggy applications. It's a little more spade-like than a, uh, a more narrower tip and a little more robust if you're getting you know down and dirty and doing some like digging and prying, that sort of thing. The triad lock as well works nicely in those sorts of kind of off camber is the wrong word, but uh, directional forces acting on the lock when you might actually be doing some of that digging. So that's nice and reliable there. The gaps uh, that you see in where the uh, interfaces and everything uh, lock up I mean, it's easy to clean out, whether rinse out or just blowing out with air. That's a nice thing. And the handle shape here, the way it curls down and you've got this flat also, I think, palm it right there, lends itself well to a, a digging, uh, pokey style of motion that I'm assuming might come into play for your, uh, your archeology span career, vocation, we'll call it vocation. However, as good as any lock is when, when doing that sort of thing, this might be a chance where a fixed blade could be an option. And you mentioned in a bag or pocket. So I understand uh, my, my thought was you don't want like a big belt knife. Fortunately, there are options and let me, oh, sorry. You did say on under a hundred dollars as well. Both of these uh, se selections I have for you are about the same price, uh, 68 bucks for the folder or about 60 bucks for this CRKT Razel fixed blade. And it is a pocket knife. Uh, it is not a folding knife, but with this sheath right here, injection molded with a clip, that'll slip into a pocket very nicely, provided your pocket is large enough for it, of course. And then you've got a tool with no folding mechanism to uh, potentially break or wear out if you're really you know, digging and thrashing on it. It's just a solid hunk of steel. It's D2. So it's not the most stainless of steels. It's only sort of a semi stainless thing, but should be pretty easy with just a wipe down to, uh, to, to be just fine in most scenarios. You do say, what's the word you said? Uh, without cleaning, it doesn't, it's not necessarily going to require like serious cleaning. Just like wipe it down. It could be on your pant leg and that'll be just fine. A uh, really cool look to it too with the uh, micarta handles with red accents on the liners and the pins there. That's really cool. You've got the backside here has a protruding pommel that could, or a protruding tang that could potentially be useful for tapping on things. That's what archaeologists do, right? They tap on things. No. They brush things. That's right. Maybe I should have got a mushroom knife. Ooh, and those have a hook 
type blade sometimes, like a Velociraptor claw. I'm thinking of like the opening scene from Jurassic Park now. Yeah, I think they'd really dig that. Game, respect, game. Good one. You were, you were leading to that, weren't you? I've been waiting for minutes. <laughs> queuing up on that one. Uh, we don't have a Tonto profile on this Razel, but we do have a sharpened leading edge, which means it could do chisely stuff even better than a typical Tonto. It might be a little more, uh, you know, specialized purpose driven, but you're talking about throwing it in a bag or pocket um, to, you know, potentially not be really used as a, a daily carry type of thing, something you're gonna use the next day on the job. So I think this would apply. What do you folks think in this situation? Do you go fixed blade or do you go folder? There's good options either way, but I'd, I'd love to know what you folks think in that regard. Um, there's a hollow grind on both of these knives. I should mention that as well, but the leading edges are flat ground, so a little more robust uh, than the hollow ground sections. Throw it to the comment section. You let me know uh, which way you folks would go. Uh, next question comes from Zachary Heiberger. Uh, my son is interested in knives and knife collection. As a responsible parent, can you please recommend action types for kiddos, button lock, crossbar frame lock, et cetera, from Dr. Z. Uh, so I've done a video on, um, you know, best first knives uh, for, you know, for kids or for anyone really. I will leave a link to that video. Um, but you did ask specific, specifically about action types and you mentioned collection as well. That's such a cool hobby to share with, you know, your, your offspring. Um, and before anyone gets up in arms in the comments, oh, kids shouldn't have knives, this or that. Every kid's gonna be different. Only the parent is gonna know when a kid is ready for something uh, like a knife, the responsibility that comes with handling knives. So stay out of those other folks' homes, perhaps in this case. Uh, only you're gonna know when, when you're ready and you're also gonna know when they're not ready. So you're gonna know when it is not right for you. Um, action types. I like something for a first knife especially that requires two hands to close. Opening can be one-handed, I'm, I'm less concerned about that. But something with a back lock, for example, um, or you know, cold steel's triad lock, which is a, you know, an offshoot of the back lock, are honestly my pref preference for uh, this type of scenario. It's that two-handed approach encourages a deliberate handling of the knife. And yes, you know, when you are unlocking the blade, your fingers are gonna be in the closing path, but it is a slow action. You're not flicking a lockback knife closed. But something that takes, you know, takes a second where the, the, the little kid has to pause to close the knife is important. It, it encourages safe handling, in my opinion. I also like an index finger guard, no matter what you uh, wind up going with. Uh, just for that bit of protection. And don't go too small either, I would say. Um, the, there's sort of a fallacy to think like the smaller knives are better for kids. Kids also sometimes have less coordinated, hand, less coordinated uh, hands than we adulties do. Um, so the smallest things aren't necessarily the best. Medium size and bigger, I tend to, uh, tend to think are the way to go. But again, throw it up there in the comments. Again, however, or sorry, again, we'll link to that video up here or wherever we wind up linking to it. But again, this is another situation where a fixed blade could also be a really good option. And since you mentioned collection, we've got a video we did on, you know, 10 cheap knives everyone should own. Uh, and actually this knife might've been in the 10 knives everyone should own without the budget cap on it, Amora. Amora fixed blade is inexpensive and yet highly capable. They feel way better than the price. And you can get something like this basic 546 for about 14 bucks with a stainless steel blade. There's plenty of handle length there for all kinds of different hand sizes. You've got a finger guard, you've got a manageable size to the blade, and you've got something that every collection should have uh, anyway. <laughs> you know, I've got several Moras and if you don't own a Mora yet, why not? Maybe that's a question for the comment section. Um, Fixed blade's less likely to fail in terms of closing on your fingers. I mean, I've got a particularly uh, messed up looking finger here when a slip joint pocket knife closed on my finger in Cub Scouts while I was carving a bar of soap uh, because the best thing with a slippery, or the best thing with a non-locking uh, knife is to be cutting, cutting slippery things. That's why they call it a slip joint. Thomas, slaying me today with the dad jokes. You're, you're racking up the wins over there. 
Um, so again, comment section. Fixblader folder uh, for the youngins in this case. And, it, and if a folder, what type of action are you uh, keen on? Let me know what you think. Next question comes from Brian Matthews. Savivi Sokoke versus CJRB Echo. Both are Ray Laconico designs and very similar, but which one is better? And if you could pick one, what would it be? Um, which one is better well, depends mostly on preferences in this case. Um, just like the preference between a fixed blade or a folder in these, you can't go wrong with either. CGRB and Civivi both build a really nice knife. But let's talk about these two knives together, just because I happen to like both of them uh, and I happen to like Ray Laconico's design. So I felt like talking about it. So here they are. I picked the two most similar versions we could. Both are uh, front flipping knives, well, in this case with G10 handles, although several uh, handle materials are available. Uh, we'll talk about the CJRB real quick first. You can get this in two formats actually, a liner lock or a button lock. Uh, the liner lock versions have a contoured scale, but if you prefer that button lock, those are gonna come with a flat scale. So I went with the liner lock version here uh, because it's more similar to the Sokoke in that it also has a uh, contoured handle and a liner lock. $57 for this, you've got RPM9, a powder metallurgy steel, a rarity at uh, this price point for sure. You've got a reversible deep carry pocket clip and a nice feel in the hand with those G10 handles. Uh, the Sokoke comes in a few dollars more, about 63. Uh, you've also got thumb studs rather than a blade cutout, but both of these knives have thumb opening. Uh, 14C 28N blade steel, drop point blade. And compared to the modified sheep's foot of the Echo, that could be your deciding factor right there. Which blade shape do you prefer? Pick that one then. Interestingly though, the actual edge profile, the angle of that, uh, that sharpened edge, almost exactly the same. Not perfectly, but they are remarkably close to one another. So you're not gonna get a huge difference in the slicing characteristics between the two. Rather interesting. Uh, the Sokoke fills up the hand a little bit more. For me, I find that slightly more comfortable. Uh, liner lock on both is in set. You've got a deep carry reversible clip on both of the knives. Very similar there. Um, let's see. Let's try the front flipping action on both of these. Like that, for me, that could be the deciding factor since I don't always get on with every uh, front flipper out there. No problem with the Echo. No problem with the uh, Sokoke either. Um, if you had to pick just one. Well, I will say like the steel on the Echo um, is, you know, arguably a little better, a little more premium. You've got uh, that powder metallurgy construction, which is certainly really sweet. Uh, however, I love 14C28N that you get on the Echo as well. I think it's a fantastic stainless steel, nice and tough. Um, for me, I'd probably go with the Echo. You can't go wrong with either one, but I'd probably go with the Echo. It feels a little bit better in my hands. Your mileage may vary. And I'm a drop point guy. I'm a sucker for a drop point. So I would, uh, I would get on well, more well, more well better with that. So we'll go with that. Yeah, can't go wrong with either. Have fun. And pick your favorite color. Yeah. <laughs> you can have any, any color you like, as long as it's jade. No, there are other, other colors available uh, for either of those. Um, uh, we do actually have a Knife Center exclusive of the Echo. It comes with a titanium bolster and black micarta inlays. Uh, that is the button lock version. Uh, about 73 bucks, that, that will be a flat handle scale on that one though, you don't get the contouring going on. Hope that helps. Uh, well, now we come to the lightning round for today. First one comes from Brad Like Jello. Wonder what he's having for dessert a lot of today. Like Jello. <laughs> I'm not one of them. Never been a fan. Pudding? I'll, I'll go get down on some pudding. Jello makes pudding. Oh, if you're talking Jello brand versus like the gel gelatin dessert. Comment section. I don't care whether you like gelatin dessert or not, actually. Um, I like you all, but we don't need to talk about that, do we? Uh, anyway, Brad Like Jello says, this is the lightning round. It's going fast. Fast as pudding. Uh, question about the CRKT Mishaka. 
also in JG10 here by coincidence, curious how it opens for left-handed use. All the videos I've seen are right-hand opening. Is it lefty friendly? Uh, well, it only has a right-sided pocket clip. So if that doesn't bother you, then it could be lefty friendly. Um, the way this works, for those who don't know, you push the scale on the, the forward facing side out this way. So it's real nice to grip in your right hand and flex with this section of your thumb to open that blade. But can't do this quite the same way with the left hand. So let me fumble on the closing here. You can do it. It's not as um, you know, smooth, um, but you have to hold it much more particularly. It can be done. You don't have a reversible pocket clip, however. It's a very cool knife made by Hogue for CRKT, which is just a partnership I like want to say I adore that partnership, but I kind of do. Like, I love the guys at both of those companies. And I think it's a great matchup. 300 bucks made in the USA, MagnaCut blade, great for all kinds of stuff. Next question comes from Jack W. Uh, for years, instead of using a honing steel, I have honed my kitchen knives by using the fine slot on a pull through sharpener. Uh, it is from Wusthof, as are my knives. Uh, but I recently bought a new knife, which is supposedly sharpened at a steeper angle than my old knives. And I worry that I might actually damage it using the fine slot. Um, so again, this is another thing today that just comes down to preference. Kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, this Shun Santoku, for example, compared to a Wusthof, which is typically sharpened at about 20 degrees per side, Shuns and most uh, Japanese style cutlery are sharpened at 15 degrees for, per side. So if you come through and run it through a, uh, a fine pull through sharpener that's set at 20 degrees, uh, you're not actually going to be damaging the knife, but you are going to be changing the apex of that edge. Uh, and you remove the finer cutting uh, abilities that comes with that steeper angle. Um, that may or may not be a, a, a bad thing, however depending on your preferences. If you want a stronger edge, it's going to be a little bit tougher for you know, more uh, general purpose use, less prone to uh, rolling or chipping. That could be good, but it won't slice quite as finely as if it had that finer edge on it. So don't worry about damage. If you're happy with the way it's cutting, you're you know, using it through that sharpener and you're having fun with it and still getting what you need to get done. Have at it. Don't look back. Well, now we come to our final question of the day, which is, of course, our most serious question of the day, which comes to us today from Williak LHA5. Darn it. Hurricane flooding has brought sharks into my yard. What blade do I need to protect my family? Well, you got to lock those sharks up. So what better than a knife equipped with a shark lock? It's right here. And I didn't get a chance to show the latest version of this Flytanium Arcade with the Demco Shark Lock on it. So here we go. It's ambidextrous too. You will have to uh, drill out. They, they have holes for left-handed pocket clips over here, but you have to drill out through the inlay if you want. There you go. Sharky, sharky. Lock them up. Any, anything better? That's all I could come up with. Well, maybe move inland. <laughs> go get away from the water. <laughs> That's all we've got for today. Uh, thank you everyone for your questions. Keep them coming down below. Keep those most serious questions uh, throwing at us, thrown our way as well. Um, and maybe it'll get featured next time. Let me know what you thought of the comments. Let me know again for these situations and maybe more generally too. fixed blade or folder for you folks. Would love to know. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description. They'll take you to knifecenter.com where don't forget about our long running knife rewards program because the least thing we can do when you buy one of our knives today is give you some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. Two, two against one today on the dad jokes. We are signing off. See you next time.